Hello everyone, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Coding. In this episode, I'm going to try to touch on the new object in Blender 2.92 Alpha. It's called uh, Point Cloud. It's not new, but it's new in Blender and it's still being developed currently. And apparently Point Cloud is closely related to geometry nodes. And so this is like an instance uh, torus on another torus, on the surface of the torus. And to create something like this, it's uh, it's becoming really, really quite easy. I mean, you can do the same thing using particle and instancing. It's basically the same thing, but you do everything using nodes. And hopefully one day we can do something like this quite easily. This is from almost two years ago, where uh, many people attempting to, you know, to make Blender able to import point cloud with the color etc and instance objects so it's still being developed so uh, definitely we, we are seeing how it's got it's getting there uh, and so this is the objects okay this is point cloud currently it's a very very basic object and you um, it comes with a uh, by default it's like a random radius and random position but if you assign a modifier very very quickly this is the geometry nodes modifier it will create geometry nodes of course and the geometry by default it's a uh, it's just like a data it's like an empty data i mean it's not really empty it has random positions and um radius okay it doesn't really render until you use instance point instance okay and uh, if we try using a cube for example i go to edit mode and make it smaller let's see geometry so this already contain position and radius we can have random boxes and this thing will render so let's save this very quickly so this is a uh, on cloud geometry nodes all right so point instance is uh, also inside geometry nodes and this is actually in the previous version, you can just use mesh and use the point of the mesh to generate instance. In this version, you can't yet. So still, you can see this is why it's called alpha. Things will change. But anyway, uh, you can learn that point instance nodes will take position, rotations, and scale. Maybe in the future, it will take index number and color at least. For now, it's like this position, rotation, scale. So nothing much but we can modify the position rotations and scale we can actually override any of these attributes of point instance so for, for example with the scale we can just override this with the radius of our um, point cloud you can see it's uh, now it's using the radius of point cloud and becomes really small, right? So that uh, that makes sense. Let's uh, let's use another thing, random attribute node. So random attribute. What is this exactly? Attribute that can override whatever we have here at the end. So let's say if we want to override the position, we can do that. Just simply pipe down our geometry. And now we can randomize the position if we change this to vector. All right. So suddenly we have control over the random position of point cloud. This is our master instance object and this is our point cloud so we can control it in x y and z and 
and then we can also randomize the seed okay cool yep so what else can we do here uh, can we control the number of points yes uh, can we control the number um, the number of points yes we can um, that's gonna be something that's it's gonna be a point distribute okay and this is using the density and the density is connected to vertex weight but we're gonna we're not gonna touch that yet um, what we can do however we can turn any mesh into point cloud for example for example uh, like monkey head here we know Suzanne how many points of Suzanne we have um, Okay, we cannot see the number of points. Can we? Normally, we can see it down there. But anyway, we can F3 and then convert Suzanne into point cloud. We can also turn a torus. F3 convert this into point cloud. Okay, because they are they are point cloud. We can simply select this guy select this guy and the last lastly our point cloud and then control l and then modifier so we're gonna assign the same modifier into this guy or or just do it from here it's easier okay so here I'm actually deleting Suzanne and replacing it with this attribute. Supposedly we just if we just pipe this in, we still have Suzanne. Okay, so anyway we're gonna delete that. We're gonna come back to our original boxes for now. Another another way is really just to use object info. Get another geometry like a torus, and select our point cloud. Here with object info, we can grab our larger torus and use the locations as uh, position. I believe we should be able to do that. Okay, yeah, it seems to work with a point cloud. So random position is no longer being used. We can now actually just use like a random rotations instead. Here, since we are using the, we want to control the scale better, so we just change the scale attribute to scale, and make this float number instead. So we have a really like full control of a lot of things with the instance object. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully this is not confusing. But anyhow, what's really nice about this is of course a simple point cloud object which is just a bunch of points. It doesn't render until you do the instancing. It's almost like a particles. So basically that's what it is. Rethinking particle and instancing using nodes. So in what in a glance you can see okay we have this uh, source object we're randomizing um, the rotations of the instance and then we run randomizing the scale of the instance and then we use the point instancing to random uh, to position our instance objects which is just a cube 
in the future we might have like multiple instance of the of objects to be instance on point cloud okay so that's uh, the first understanding of this and I did a mention of point distribute this one maybe something that I can talk about in the next video we can use pain weight or vertex weight and then use that data to randomize like points on the surface using the density you know like a, a dynamic pain weight or something in the future okay for now it's just like this and for for if you want to randomize the color very very quickly you can assign the material to the cube and then go to shader editor this is a quick one we just use object info because they are all the instance are treated like an object they are really really fast you can use color ramp but you can also use hue saturations so if you plug this random into the hue you get a random color and you should be able to see the result very, very quickly so let's say you like something like this you can use uh, you can use math and just you can animate the value like this so you have something that's quite nice this thing will render however there's a one caveat because this is blender still blender alpha you cannot really bake the point cloud into mesh okay you cannot instance somehow i think you cannot really instance or you cannot bake it into a, a mesh for now so i think the be a better way is not to start from point cloud i think in the future you should be able to just bake it uh, for now it's just like this okay there's one more trick that you can do if you use spectrum nodes for example and then you want to generate points or mesh you can do that very easily for example we are if you are we are using torus torus knot and then if you output a mesh viewer connect vertices and edges we have this torus knot and i just gonna i'm just gonna put it to the side so this is just a bunch of points connected with edges we can play around with the minimum major and minor radius okay cool and you can also play around with this curve resolution so basically it's a bunch of points of course or vertices that you can type the, this uh, this guy into okay so let's do that very quickly let's save this this is the basic right you can easily instance anything into this donut if I make this smaller donut let's call it mini donuts I can select our point cloud and replace the instance cube with our mini donuts so that's basically the idea and the donuts the mini donuts of course need to have the shader so you can have random colors however if you want to use this mesh uh, you can of course this is the mesh that's still being generated on the fly using stretch of add-on so instead of using our big donut we can replace this with our alpha so stretch of nodes is now talking to geometry nodes more or less we are, we are providing the the source input for our geometry node so it's a it's actually quite powerful i'm increasing the count of the points here using curve resolution and then if we use randomize 
we can blur and scatter them. So this is one way to do it. All right, so now you understand the whole uh, process. You start with a, a source mesh, and then you tweak the position, rotations, and scale, right? And then you you use it as an instance for uh, the point cloud. So this is gonna be the common thing to do in the future, I guess. And there, really using the group input and group output. You can see here we don't we don't always we can just skip the group input geometry time to time and just provide our own data and it will work it should work and we has we still have control over the size of our donuts torus whatever and then with spread chalk of course you have a lot of control here so instead of using torus node you can use anything including procedural torus or spiral or whatever so suddenly it's, uh, it's becoming very easy to make changes so this is the point of using nodes this is a vector p field so this one doesn't have mass information and so blender is normally like that it doesn't like just points we need to have edges i think so this might work better still no it doesn't like it okay spiral so we have spiral here and our point cloud is still unhappy with the data or it's missing the data all right so spiral and lots of uh, our donuts lots of donuts there you go that's uh, basically what i want to show you today um, there isn't much here with geometry nodes. There isn't much yet, like I said. Uh, you can do some neat thing, uh, but you can see, like yesterday we were talking about Boolean and transform nodes. Today we are talking about instancing and how we can override some of the some of this position, rotation, and scale attribute, and we can randomize the instance objects color maybe we can already like randomize the instance objects so not just single instance we can have multiple but there's a lot of hidden attributes here but i don't know what it is unless you dig the code maybe you can you can you can override other things like uh, the index or use the data but anyhow it's a it's a lot of things to try And if you use it with combination with like a spread chalk, it's gonna be really, really powerful because spread chalk is slightly weak in terms of instancing and Boolean. However, geometry nodes already have really powerful and really fast Boolean and instancing. So they might work together, even though it's currently still alpha. All right, so in, hopefully this is useful. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.